Thank you for joining me. My name's Corey, and I like to do lapidary arts as well as a lot of different cool things. Leland Blue is a slag glass that is a byproduct of smelting metal, but when you go to machine it, there are a lot of fractures in it. It's basically been mistreated and has a lot of cracks in it, so when you machine it, it ends up just falling apart. You need to do something to hold that stone together when you're cutting and polishing it. So I'm just using regular masking tape and taping around the edge, paying attention to how much space I'm leaving on top of the stone, and then just folding the, the masking tape under the back side of it. So now that I've gone through all the stones in my batch, I'm going to set up and uh, under my heat lamp, that's why the background looks so yellow, uh, under the heat lamp, I'm gonna um, put epoxy in over top of each one of these stones. For this part, I'm gonna use a healthy amount of epoxy because these are the backs of the stones and I'm gonna sand them, leaving a little bit of epoxy, but sanding most of it back down to the uh, flatness of the stone. For this step, it takes about two hours or so for the epoxy to cure properly. Sorry, this spot in the video is dark, but I'm showing you what the stone looks like after the epoxy is cured. I got a really healthy coat on the back of them now. So the next step is to take them to my bill wheel sander, which is basically a sander with soft pads that uses water. You don't want to breathe in rock dust so it uses water to keep the sandpaper cool and uh, also helps to cut the stone and what I'm doing is I'm taking the epoxy that we just applied to the back of the stone and sanding it flat and close to where I want it to end up being So you can see I left a very thin coat of epoxy on the back of the stone. That should be enough to keep it so it doesn't want to break apart when I'm machining it later. Okay, so now I've ground the back of the stones all flat and I've got them set underneath my heat lamp. And this time I'm going to put a much thinner coat of epoxy on the front because most of this I'm going to sand away back to the stone. The point is uh, that I want to fill any cracks and pits that are on the front of the stone. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to cut a groove in the side of the stone. The groove is there to kind of help when you wire wrap it. It's kind of a technique I like to use. It makes wire wrapping a lot easier and nicer. So what I did was I took my slant lap uh, machine and actually took a cutting saw blade and made a, a template that went on the top of the bottom of that saw blade and allowed me to cut, uh, to use that as a, a guide template so that the saw blade only went in a certain amount. 
So what I'm doing is just working my way around the stone and cutting this groove in the edge of the stone so that the wire can fit in that channel. So here you can see the even groove that I've created all the way around the stone. And what I want you to notice is I've set the groove a little bit low of center. That is so that later on when I'm doing a dome shape, the edge is even. So here's a different stone that I have that I'm going to show you how to drill a hole in. And I've got a setup here with some cork, uh, my Dremel tool with a center diamond tapered bit. Um, that helps to drill the stone and uh, a tray of water and cork so that uh, the water essentially keeps the the bit cool while you're cutting so I can just press down on the stone and then the stone is underwater now I usually just eyeball where it is that I'm putting the hole. Every once in a while I get it off center and I'm like, ah crap. But uh, most of the time they come out just great, just by eyeballing them. I kind of find that drilling stones is a little bit of the frustrating part of doing the work just because the, the bits themselves, you have to be really careful there's uh, diamonds on the tip of them, but if you work that bit too hard, it just rubs the diamond right off, and then your bit doesn't cut anymore. So it's always good to have a, a whole bunch of bits on hand. Luckily, they're not real expensive, but I hate throwing stuff away. And whenever I'm drilling stones, I just as soon as it stops cutting, I throw it away and grab a new one. So there you go, I drilled a tiny hole in this one. And I like starting with a small hole and then you can use a bigger bit to make it bigger later if you really want. Okay, now uh, I'm getting to what I think is the fun part, which is actually putting the dome shape on the cabochon. Um, so again, I'm using my bull wheel. And... Uh, First I start by doing the faces and edges and then what I'll do is put a bevel around the edge of the stone. And what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to get uh, all the epoxy off of the face of the stone and I'm leaving some of the epoxy on the back just kind of as a carrier to make sure that the stone doesn't want to break later. And you can see how uh, once I got the face and the sides of it the way that I want, now I'm angling the stone to put a nice healthy bevel around the face of the stone. And I, I pay uh, good attention to the shape of that bevel, if you keep looking at the stone, the edge of the stone and the face of the stone as you're cutting it, you want it to be very consistently beveled around the stone. It'll make the shape of it better. So now you can see that I've switched from beveling it to rounding over the corners. You can see I'm pulling from the the face of the stone to the edge and buffing the corners that the bevel created off of the stone. That gives it a really nice uh, looking dome shape uh, to the stone. And uh, so I'm just kind of working it around. You don't want to stay in one spot too long because it, it'll show up, but I'm working my way around the stone and uh, taking the corners off. So here you can see the stone. Uh, I'm using 60 grit on my bull wheel and it's got a nice shape to it. The back is flat. I leave a corner on the back side and then I rolled over the top of the dome. 
Okay, so on the other side of my bull wheel, I have 400 grit, and this, this grit uh, starts to give it a polish, but helps to smooth the stone over a lot better than the 60 grit. The 60 grit t tends to leave heavy scratches. Uh, the 400 grit, though, um, helps to kind of round out the stone and get rid of the big scratches that the first grit uh, would have left in the stone. So I'm just working my way around this stone. Uh, I'm trying not to see him too much at any one spot. And uh, rolling around the face and edges of the stone with the 400 grit. So I'll dry the stone off here and uh, then I'll show you that this stone is a lot shinier uh, and a lot of the flaws from the 60 grit are gone now. Uh, that's why you work your way up through the grits to give yourself a nice polish. Okay, so now that I've prepared all the stones uh, to 400 grit, <clears throat> I'm setting up my vibratory polisher. Uh, and I'm going to run a, a 600 grit polish on them. So uh, what I'm using is a tumble vibe. And I bought extra bins, bin trays, uh, so that I can have... Um, just one per grit. I, I, right now I'm using my 600 grit tray and I'm just uh, assembling that tray in there and I'm gonna add some of uh, some of the grit to the bin uh, right now. I just use a tablespoon of grit uh, to uh, tumble them. So I'm setting up right now um, to get the, um, the media ready. I also too like to add a little bit of water in there so that the grit holds to the stones. So here are my stones that I've gone to 400 grit with and I'm just going to take them just like they are and throw them in the bin. Um, I did a couple handfuls so we'll uh, get them into the tumbler and I'll show you what that looks like. I like to tighten up my tumbler with it running just to make sure that the um, the nuts that it uses, the little rubber nuts on there, um, don't back off because if they do then that the bin just spins around and goes crazy. Okay, so this is really fun to watch. I'm going to show you with the tumbler running. Um, the stones kind of flip around in this tumbler. And uh, also, I use uh, what you can see is ceramic media in there. I got two different types. It helps to act as filler. Your tumbler has to be a certain amount full for it to work properly. So. Basically, they're in there for filler, but they also kind of get into the cracks and crevices if there is. I really recommend having one of these tumble vibes. Uh, they don't round the stone corners of the stones off as much as a uh, rotary tumbler, but they really work very quickly. So I love using this tool. It's one of my favorites. Okay, so now that I've got uh, them tumbled, it took probably four to six hours and I washed them off. And you can see the finish from 600 is pretty good here. But I'm going to cheat. I use this quick shine on occasion. Um, it says it's for stone. It's normally for floors, but it actually works pretty good for, you know, just cabochons too. Normally, I would try mechanically polish stones to as high of a shine as I can, but 
some stones just want to be dull. So uh, what I did is I uh, put them in a bin here and then I'm gonna put a little bit of this floor shine on them. Uh, I just squirt a little bit on it and uh, just kind of shake it around in the, um, the cup that I'm using. Just to get a little bit on there. I, I find that it adds a little bit to the shine, works pretty good and pretty quickly. So I'm just going to position these stones in this little drying mat that I've made. Um, and I would consider this basically to be the last step. Um, after this, they're ready to be wire wrapped um, or made into jewelry. But once these are all dry, uh, I'm just going to put them into my inventory and see if anybody wants to buy some.